Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, appreciate you all being here. A big rivalry week. Excited to uh, play Iowa this week. And uh, I know you got a lot of questions. So with that, we'll open up for questions. PJ, what were just some of your opening impressions just on the Maryland game after watching it back? Yeah, um, we did a lot of good. We did a lot of not so good. You know, they, I told you before, they play a little bit of – it's almost like playing the option, right? There's a, there's a dive, there's a pitch, and all these other things. And when you miss one tackle, that's when you saw the big plays happen, you know? And we just didn't make the plays. And we missed tackles, uh, missed three big tackles that led to huge runs. Um, you know, I'm not going to say missing Antoine Winfield Jr. didn't hurt us. I mean, he's our best football player. Everything we do on a D our defense is funneled to make sure he's the guy and the extra guy to make the play where he needs to make it. Um, and then behind them are very, very young players. And um, that's a position we got caught in, and we've got to learn from it, get better. But you've got to give Marin a lot of credit. They're a very good football team, very good. Those quarterbacks are very talented. Um, and their defense was the best defense we played, the front seven. Um, and I thought, you know, Zach wasn't able to get out of the pocket, you know, with his ankle, and that, that's that, that's not my that, that's my fault. Um, but again, they knew that, and they kept him in the pocket, and he had no place to escape or step up. But it's part of fighting through and and fighting through your injury, and, and um, you know. But again, they, you got to give them a lot of credit. They're a really good football team, very talented, and um, you know, we showed them in the off in, in the bye week of exactly why from the four games, not just the loss, because you know I, there were a lot of things I didn't like when we played Miami of Ohio. And we showed them we could have easily lost this game because this, 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 and this. And then we showed them again in Maryland. We could have easily won if it was this, 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 and this. So it's not necessarily letting the result or the, the score dictate a loss is a loss. A win's a win. But how we got to that point is uh, what we dissect as coaches. We don't look at the end result. Um, you want the end result to be in your favor, but you've got to educate and you've got to continue to teach. And those are the things we pulled from that game. Give them a lot of credit. Really good football team. Trying to upgrade your talent on your roster. It seems like you can recruit speed, but you have to build strength. Correct. How, how many off-season strength cycles do you think it'll take for you to get where you want to be on your lines? Uh, you know, Chip, that's a great question. A great question. Um, it talked about the, when you recruit, you can recruit speed, but you, you don't really develop strength till they get here. You know, grown man strength. We have one guy on the team I think has grown man strength as a youngster. His name's Daniel Falele. He might be the strongest person on our team, naturally. The 6'9", 400-pounder from Australia and IMG. He's just an incredibly strong guy. Now, he's only going to get stronger, which is scary. But you can get the speed in here, but it takes a few cycles to be able to go through, right? And uh, remember, there's 33 freshmen on our 2D. These are kids who have not been in our program more than one year, and some only been here three months. They are 18 years old. To sit there and say they're a grown man now, that, that, that's silly. Now, that's what's on our team right now. We're, we start, I think it's eight freshmen we start. Iowa starts one. We start eight. And those are a lot of those guys are true freshmen. So when you start to look at these guys of the strength and what they look like, they're going to look really good. But they look, they're high school seniors plus is the way I always describe them. They're a, high, they're a fifth year high school player. Because that's what they naturally are. You'd like to redshirt them all. That's not a position we're in. We've got to have guys that do play, and then we've got to have a lot of guys who do the four-year redshirt rule. But it's going to take a while to get that strength to where it needs to be. It seemed like you just showed up with Maryland when you look at their defensive line, just pure strength against some of your young guys on offense. It was. You know, I mean, I'm glad you see that. Uh, that that's, that's reality, right? One thing I've always be, I'll, I'll never lie to anybody. This is reality. Right, of, of where we're at. Now, that doesn't mean you can't win football games. But the facts are the facts. This isn't, you know, it's, it, the analogy I made, I think, the other day is it's like having 14 to 15 NFL rookies playing at one time. And that would, you'd look at the GM and the owner and the president and be like, what are you doing? Like, like what are you, are you serious right now? But that is what we're, the position we're in for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but that's okay. We said, I said from day one when I got the job, year two, we're going to get a lot younger before we become more experienced. And hopefully you all remember that. I've said it numerous times. And now we're younger. The youngest team in America, or third most inexperienced team in the country. But that's okay. Uh, you know, you lose your best offensive player, you lose your best defensive player. That's still okay. That's opportunities for, you know, Jordan Howden to grow and Benny Sapp to grow, because they're going to play a lot of football here eventually. And now they got to play it now, maybe before they're ready to do it, or a Bryce Williams or a Muhammad Ibrahim and our quarterback and go on and on. Uh, Jake Paulson at tight end, and 
Uh, even Blaze Andrews, you know, at, at, at the offensive line position. But this is just, that's one big recruiting class. Really, that's one big recruiting class. That's the only one big one we brought in. Remember, when we got here, we had three weeks to recruit. That's one. So as we continue to go and we continue to recruit the way we recruit and the talent level we continue to get in and then develop them in our culture, I mean, this is, this is going to be really, really fun and really special. But again, this is fun too. I enjoy this part. I enjoy the building part. I enjoy this part. And that doesn't mean you can't win. I mean, we're three and one. Everybody, I can't imagine the amount of, amount of text messages I got after that Maryland game. I'm sitting there thinking, like, what, like, everybody's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, we were picked 12th out of 14 in the Big Ten. Like, what, what are, what are, like, what's the, what's the text for, you know? And so, um, but our team believes in each other. They believe in our culture. They believe in our program. They believe in what they're doing. And they become incredibly tight and close. Now, it doesn't fix a strength issue, but us as coaches, we've got to be very creative in how we can, as we said before, manipulate points, create points, and get points on the board, and then obviously stop them on defense. But it's been a lot of fun. As a teacher and an educator, I love it. You know, when they become seniors, they know a lot of it. You're still coaching, but um, you're developing, but you're also managing too. You know, and when these guys are so young, you're coaching every day and you're educating every day and they're learning every day. And it's a lot of fun. Well, without Antoine, uh, how important is Jacob Huff uh, back there? Well, he's very important. Jacob Huff is really important for us back there. I mean, he's the guy in the secondary who's played a ton of football, him and Antonio Chenault. So they've got to really step up the leadership, um, you know, because they're going to have a lot of young people around them. Any way you, you cut it from this point forward, there's going to be youngsters everywhere in that secondary. But that's okay. Again, it's, it's okay. It's okay to be young. And uh, there's things that come along with being young. But they have to step up their leadership. And when they, our players look at those guys, they've got to sit there and say, I want to be like him. So that even puts more pressure on them of everything they do, from how they respond to how they walk to how they talk to what they say, when they say it, how loud they say it, uh, their actions. That's all being looked at. I mean, it's under a microscope by all of our young players. If you're, a, if you're an upperclassman on this team, I mean, our, our youngsters got their, their, their microscopes out looking at everything you do. And so uh, they've got to set the example way better than they ever have. Yeah, how's Antoine handled just the, the reality that he's out for the year? <laughs> he's an unbelievable young man. Uh, even when we were out there, and, and he knew something was wrong. And uh, he goes, well, that's football. I mean, I guess when you have a dad who plays in the NFL for 14 years, I mean, you kind of see some things that happen, right? And he understands this is a, a violent game. It's a contact sport. He had a hustle injury, you know. There are two things that happen with his injury is either your foot breaks or you tear that ligament, and he tore that ligament in his foot. But he plays the game the right way. He respects the game. And I think, you know, eventually really good things are going to happen to him. You know, the restoration is going to come around for him because uh, now he's a redshirt, redshirt freshman. And I keep telling him, I said, you're, look, you see Rashad Bateman over there? He's like, yeah, he's a good player. I said, you're in his class. And I said, you're the only person on this team that's getting younger, you know. And uh, – but he has a great attitude, very positive. Uh, he got a chance to go home for a little bit right after surgery, which I know his mom was really excited to see him. Um, he's just always smiling. He's got such a positive attitude. Doesn't mean it doesn't affect him. It's affecting him. But he makes sure it's affecting him, and he's showing it in a positive way to the young guys of how to handle an injury. Because, I mean, when you're the best player, and everybody, all these young guys are looking at you, he's handling it with such maturity. And that's what you want to see out of, uh, out of one of your best players. But not only that, one of your best people and your leader. You know, how to respond to Winfield, you know, and having these last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're a true freshman, you get thrown in. Not only that, you got to replace Antoine Winfield Jr. That's a lot of pressure put on you. But one thing we keep telling all of our young players is you don't have to be anybody else but yourself. We don't want you to be anybody else but yourself. We want you to be the best version of you at that position, period. And then, you know, at the end of the year, then we'll evaluate that. But right now, just go. Just go work and be the best version of yourself you can possibly be academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, and make sure you fit in into those four areas, it emotionally, physically, and mentally. Because all four of those things have to have the other three. And yeah, they all have to be burning at the right height, which is very difficult for the newness of it all. You know? And that's why I gave you the best analogy I could of maybe 15 rookies on one NFL team that just doesn't sound like it makes any sense. Well... When you have 33 freshmen on your two deep, that doesn't sound right either. But there's a, reasons why, a lot of reasons why our depth chart and our roster is that way. And we've only been here 18 months or 19, 20 months, so we, we've got a, we got a lot of work to do. What, what, 
What impressed you about Wisconsin or about Iowa in that Wisconsin game? Well, good thing we got to watch both teams. You know, uh, I would say this is that you know this is a complete. Uh, uh, I would say this is, this is a respectful comment to, to Iowa, and it's a complete compliment to them. Um, they do what they do, and they do what they do very well. Probably better than any other team I've ever watched in terms of they are who they are. Right? They don't stem far away from who they are, and they execute at such a high level, offensively and defensively. And defensively, they keep everything in front of you. They got big, long, tall, rangy, strong defensive linemen, active linebackers, and they tackle probably better than any team I've watched. Um, and then offensively, they do everything they can. They, it's not a secret. They're going to run the football. And uh, Stanley's a tremendous quarterback who can stand in the pocket, throw it. He can get out. He's tough to bring down. He's surprisingly big. He's a big kid. And, um, you know, they're going to run the football, but then they've got two of the best tight ends you'll ever see. They might have one of the, the first tight end taken in the draft coming up here, and they use him in all the nakeds, all the boots, all the waggles, all the play action passes, the deep crosses, the deep overs, and it doesn't matter if he's covered or not. I mean, it reminds me of Fumagalli when we, that Wisconsin when we got a chance to play against twice. It didn't matter if you were on him or not. He's so big, he's so rangy, he's so strong that if he's not open, he's still open, and that's what makes them so hard to defend. Is that they have great size, they have great skill. And their offensive line is really tough. So, um, and their special teams, they, they work really hard at it, you can tell. They're a very good football team. Have you played against Knowing your profession and the pressure and money and expectations, do you think you'll see another coach at one place for 20 years in, in a big school? Yes. I think you'll see a coach for 20 years at other schools. I do believe that because I think that's the right thing to do. I've always believed that. Here, here's why I say that. This is all, with all due respect. These are facts. We are four out of 31. We are 4-27 and 27 in the last 15 years in our rivalry games. Okay, What's the difference between those and the two big rivalry games we have? Well, you have, you have one coach who turned into an athletic director at one point that's been there over 30-some years. That's the same culture right, that he created. right? That when they stopped making excuses, as he would say, made their program elite at some point. Now, it took a while. It took them four or five years to get that to that point. And then Iowa, I mean... If you take Hayden Fry plus Kirk Ferentz, it's probably the same type of culture. I mean, Hayden Fry had some of the greatest staffs ever in the history of college football, right? And then seeing what Kirk Ferentz has done, I mean, that's two coaches in almost a half a century. I mean, when you look at how many coaches we've had in just 12 years, how can you get to that point by new offense every year or every other year or two years, new defenses, new special teams, new coaches, new head coach, new culture, new identity, new way, new reads, new awesome offense, new systems, new players, new beliefs of what they should recruit. How can you expect to do that? The reason why they are so successful is they've had the same system, the same coaches, the same people that they can recruit to, that they can develop in the same strength staff. And, the, and that is what uh, so that's why I, I hopingly say yes. Like I, I, I optimistically say yes, and me that's maybe more my my positive hoping side. Uh, that people do see that. That's how you do that. If people think you just take a pill, or you just sit there and hire a coach and you immediately win, you need to look around the country right now of what's happening to some of these hires that people think it just happens. It, it, not in 2018. Not the way recruiting is. Right? Not the way facilities are, and as you said, money is. It, it's not. Uh, or the, the rotation of presidents or the rotation of athletic directors. Or, it's, it's not that way, but I hope that it can be. And uh, I think it's really healthy for college football. I really do. And I think we set an, a great example for our young people of doing that. And, and you know, I just want to say that, you know, I, I wish Paul Mowder all the best. I mean, I became pretty close to him, and it's a, it's a shame that, you know, uh, he lost his job today. Um, but we're in, like you said, all of you have said it before. Coach, you got to win. I, us coaches know we have to win. But, again, what do you, at what cost? Right? We are here, and I laid out when we got here, we laid out this whole plan from year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, year, the whole thing. Before I got hired, I said, this is what it looks like. Now, if you don't like this, please do not hire me because this, this, is, this is the way I know how to do it from the people who raised me and my experience as a head coach. And – so I'm never in charge of my own time frame, but it's no coaches are. But you've got to find a way. How are you going to win, right? And what do you believe in? And what, how do you define winning, right? And I, I believe you got to have winners before you can win on the field, off the field, in every area of their life. And I've proven exactly what we said. I'm not afraid to get younger. 
But the one thing about young people is they don't stay young very long. Eventually, the young people get older. And that's what, again, we're building it from that point. What's, uh, what's Zach's health today and how close to 100 can he be? I'm sorry. He's getting closer to 100. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not really good with the percentages. Math was not my strong suit. Uh, uh, but I'd probably give him somewhere probably 85, 90 percent. Um, you know, he's getting closer to being healthy, 100 percent. But you can't really tell as much as you could before. I mean, he's running all the nakeds and boots and sprint outs and all the things. Um, so he, he's, uh, he looks really good. Having played Iowa at Western, was there anything different having played him as the Gophers coach when it pertains to the rivalry? <laughs> First time I played him, I think they beat us by 70. Uh, that, was, that was a long day. Uh, and uh, no, I, I don't think there is because the cultural sustainability is so strong. You know, Kirk Ferentz is one of the best college football coaches in the history of college football. You know what you're going to get when you play Iowa, whether you're in Iowa City or you're here in, in Minneapolis or you're in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You know what you're going to get. And that's, I think that's really what's, what makes them really special. You know exactly what you're going to get behind that brand all the time. A lot of brands change that every three years, and you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. Well, with Iowa, you always know what you're going to get. That's a complete compliment to them. TJ, uh... Against Maryland, Rashad Bateman was a major part of the offense. Uh, they were taking Tyler away a little bit. How important is it to establish him as a second option or anyone as a second option in this offense? Yeah, he's almost our leading receiver by now, so he's 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 becoming a second option very quickly, uh, if not a first option. I mean, he we we brought him here to to play, and I think he's kind of shown what he can do at times. Um, I think he showed his youth at times as well. But again, that's part of it. He he's very mature. He grows up pretty quickly. And he's so talented. So, yes, I mean, as we keep getting older and we keep getting more experience, I'm not talking years. I'm talking every day. These guys grow up every single day. Um, but we need him to play at an extremely high level, and he is. And the, rela- excuse me, the relationship between him and Zach is really becoming very strong, as well as Chris Altman-Bell. Chris Altman-Bell, I mean, he's made some of the catches that I, I don't know how anybody makes, but that's what he has to do. And then that can take the pressure off of Tyler, and now all of a sudden you have more weapons. But, again – these guys are doing that for the first time. You know, they're hitting in this role for the first time. So, again, they're going to succeed. They're going to fail. They're going to go through this whole thing. And the one thing when you have a young team is the one thing you worry about as a head coach when you have a very young team is consistency. It's consistency. So many things in their life is so inconsistent right now. And it's not, it's not routine for them. They're not, they haven't adapted to all that yet, including school, right? They're new friends, new team, new area of the country, away from mom and dad. Those aren't excuses. That's just the reality we look at, especially when we start dealing with our mental health, right, and our mental health coaches. We're very aware of all of that for our players because we know exactly what they're going through. You know, part of protecting your team is being proactive in everything. You know, once it's done, I mean, you can't protect them anymore. It's done, whatever that is. So, uh, you know, being proactive and all that. But uh, Rashad Bateman's a tremendous player, a wonderful person, and uh, he's going to have a bright future here um, starting today and tomorrow. Hey, PG, you said that uh, a couple weeks ago when, when Zach did get hurt that he was maybe backpedaling more in the pocket. Did, was that a problem against Maryland on the one pick where he threw? He didn't see the guy. It's almost like he was off his back foot, backpedaling away from pressure. Is that something he has to work on? Or? Uh, a little bit. I thought he was a lot better, which, but then he couldn't move. You know, he was better. He hung in there, but then the pressure was on him so quickly that, you know, he got sacked a little bit more. Um, there's times where he's throwing some screens, right, that where he's off the back foot. But, yes, I mean, I thought he's done a better job staying in the pocket, stepping into it. But there's two games out of his four he's been injured, you know, and so it's hard to be able to evaluate that. I thought he still stepped back in the first two games, but also showed that he could step in and step up, but also create on the run. You know, the one thing we're missing for him is the last game was the ability for him to create on the run. When the play breaks down or protection breaks down, get out of the pocket and go, which he's shown he's really good at, right? But that's one of the things you kind of deal with when you go through some, some tough situations with some injuries. And, but he's grown from it. He knows, you know, um, even if you're, you're not as mobile as you are, you, know, you got to get the ball in your hand. You got to be able to throw it away. You got to be able to somehow get out of that pocket, um, you know, and also step up and run. There's been plenty of opportunities where I thought he could pull it down and ran. But again, you're, you're, if you're not feeling as well as you need to feel, 100%, it's hard to be able to expect somebody to do that. Well, here's the thing. It, it's just like it's anything with, with youth, right? Uh, you know, he's played in four games, right? And until last week, it was three games. And when you get hit early, 
Now, if you're a senior, you know how it feels to be hit early, and you you know you get get on your offensive line. They're usually experienced, or all, and then boom, you guys change it. But when you get hit early as a as a young guy, plus you're hurt, I think that can it affects you a little bit. So we've got to be able to keep him upright, and he got hit early often. Plus he was hurt. So and again, I mean, hurt. He was his ankle. You know, I mean, it was bothering him. I should say. So, um, but it's one of those things where if you keep him off him early. You know, maybe he has a lot more success. He feels more comfortable in the pocket. But again, it's part of, on us in terms of it was hard to be able to move him. And as we continue to go, we got to get back to all the things we were doing with him, and uh, especially in game three, in mind of how we moved him a little bit more. But, um, you know, the game plan was until he got hurt. But now, you know, we have to be able to do that as we go forward. We have one more for Coach. Cool. Keandre Thomas available. Yes, he is. I thought we stopped the run really well in three games, and we didn't in one game. And again, I, I, I said exactly kind of how we how we feel why we didn't we didn't tackle well, and we had some guys in some situations that maybe they weren't ready for, and um, that's okay. You know, we've got to fix it. But uh, you know, I thought our run defense was tremendous. You know, I think we only given up nine points a game the first three games, and we get to Maryland, and and it happened very fast. Big plays are a big part of that, and it's one missed tackle. And again, against them, you miss one tackle, you don't have a second level. You know, you don't miss a tackle at the defensive line. Now your linebacker misses a tackle, and your secondary misses a tackle. The swarming to the football against Maryland is very difficult to do because they play you so gap sound, and they gap you out, which means everybody's responsible for that gap. And that's all you have to do. And you're the one person in that gap, and if that gap isn't there, it's a touchdown, and that's what you saw. And again, we didn't do a good job of that. Um, but again, it's it's – we got to get them in better positions. We got to be more creative uh, in terms of our personnel, of how we're able to move people around, and then they've got to show they can do it. Okay. Thank okay. Roll the boats, game on. Go Gophers. Thanks, everybody.